Hello, hello. Good morning, folks, or afternoon, evening, whichever is your time zone. It might be evening there. It might be morning there. It might be afternoon there. Either way, welcome to the show. So who have we got here? We've got Paul. Hello, Paul Camish. How you doing? Das Boot, what's going on? Critical Cripple, how you doing? Sinister Porpoise, what's up? BigZebra.com, how you doing? Wayne Terry from sunny Canterbury, England. So, <laughs> so the science of weird science news. So I thought today I could cover um, various weird things that have happened this year. Hello, Michael. Michael Robel. I thought I could um, cover some weird science topics stuff that scientists have done that's that's pretty strange <laughs> well we would think it was weird <laughs> how am i i'm doing quite well would you guys like to see oh sorry i turned off my camera by accident would you guys like to see nina the science doggo here she is she's just hanging out it looks like a couple of my figures got knocked over what's going on She's a little furry croissant right now, hanging out in her spot. Uh, Neen, what's she doing? You seeing what's going on in the wrong direction? You all right? You all right, Nina? Ears perking up. <laughs> but that's our science doggo. So there you go. Nina is doing pretty well. Hanging out in her spot. Oh my goodness. 
So, um, lots of different new stuff has been going on. Um, I've been pulling up all of the weird science news <laughs> for the year. Apparently, a lot of people report interesting um, um, Nina, like an El Nina. Yeah. Yep, like that. That was the name she had when um, I got her. So I just kept the name because she knows what that name is. So <laughs> she's a rescue. <clears throat> Adopt, don't shop. Big fan of that. So um, lots of weird stuff's been going on. Hey, Harmonica Man, how you doing? Uh, lots of interesting stuff as far as bizarre news. Uh, and these are from reputable sources. These aren't necessarily clickbait journalism. <clears throat> Hello, Titan. What's going on? This isn't really clickbait journalism because it actually comes from science-based um, uh, periodicals, I guess is the word. It's online science websites and... Things like that. But, some, you know, they go through and they have people that look for really strange. <laughs> strange science things. So, before I do that, I heard the science dog beat Jesus at thumb wrestling. Oh, my gosh. You heard Nina beat Jesus at thumb wrestling. I don't know that Nina, she... She would probably lose thumb wrestling because she would just go to sleep. Don't know that she would be great at that. <laughs> I don't know that she'd be great at that. But I do have um, a video I want you guys to see. I've modified it a little bit. Let me see. Uh, wait, I don't know that I downloaded it. <laughs> Let me download it really quickly. Because I'm silly. It's it's a couple minutes. Well, it's about a minute 44. I made this. Um, I made a shorter version of this and put it on my Twitter. But I thought I would um, make a longer version. Because there is so much available. I think I'm going to start doing this every week. And just make a new video and see what you guys think about it. <laughs> as far as, because um, it's funny. This is funny stuff. Um, it's taken a minute to download. You know what? I don't have to download it. Let me just do it this way. I can just blow it up on my screen and share my screen and my sound. Way easier than downloading. All right, so here we go. Let me go back to here, turn off the chat for a second. So this is a video that I've made. Um, <laughs> I can pause it and we can comment on it, but here we go. I want to go back a minute. This is stock footage, right? She pets tomatoes with a thing. I don't know what the thing is. And then she stares at liquid that's completely unrelated to the tomatoes. <laughs> I mean, for real. She pulls, she pulls what seems to be a sterile um, collection. You probably would be collecting a sample 
with it. But what's she going to get off of the skin of a tomato? <laughs> I really am a big fan of her. Um, she squirts, you know, the dropper and misses the tube entirely. And it rolls down the side. And then she does this quick little thing where she just cleans it up really fast. And she's like, I hope they didn't see that. Nobody cares. I think the people who film stock footage, they're just like, we just want people to look like they're doing science. <laughs> I can't help but think that this is how Attack of the Killer Tomatoes started. People started petting tomatoes with a small thing and then squirting stuff willy-nilly. And then she keeps adding the same color solution to this solution, expecting it to change. And sometimes she doesn't even add any, add any to the tube. Watch this part. Nothing went in. Oh, here we go. She's gonna squirt stuff on the avocado. I like the way she watches intensely. She was really looking too. Well, the squirting failed. Now she's gonna inject an avocado. She didn't even get in there. She just squirts on the outside. She's gonna watch the <laughs> There you go. So what are your thoughts? <laughs> Let me catch up on the chat here. Ah, cherry tomatoes are the most dangerous of all the tomatoes. Yes, probably so. They're the ones that are more likely that are going to turn into, oh, sorry. Ah, attack of the killer tomatoes. You know, attack of the killer tomatoes. If you guys haven't seen that film, you should totally check it out. It's a wonderful B movie. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> squirting willy nilly can lead to unwanted pregnancies. I know, right? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Shadow Kitty. How you doing? It looked like Windex. It really did, didn't it? Squirting stuff on an avocado can turn them into a transformer. It probably could, you know. I just <laughs> applying your own text over dumb stock footage. Yes, I think it'll be fun. I think I'm going to start doing that every week. I'm going to comb for terrible video stock footage. I pay for a service already. And I was looking at stuff. It's how I got that really cool um, countdown. I get, I've been doing really cool like beginning countdowns and stuff. And I already pay for a service to make a lot of my stuff. It's like 12 bucks a month. It's not that expensive. And I use it for lots of different things. Um, so I can make little videos like that. Um, <laughs> so I can make little videos of that. And they have some absolutely terrible stock footage. Bad Transformers equals Avocado Con. <laughs> I've got to fix my website because that should be on that should be on a t-shirt avocado con and a picture of a very angry genetically modified avocado. I think that might be funny. Avocado con. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. So 
the weird stuff, but it's just so, there's just, I always get it so wrong. They always get it so wrong that it's just, I'm like, what are they doing? I think any reasonable person would be like, why is, I don't understand this. Scientists don't take like half an avocado and then squirt stuff on it and look at it. Unless you're, you know, bored and you want to put a lot of um, acid on something. Say, hey, what would happen if I squirted acid on this avocado? What's that look like? And then, you know, if you're bored, you do that. <laughs> Hello, silent addle. How you doing? Genetically modified avocados will take over the planet. So there you go. Ah, uh, I guess we could probably do that. We could do that. Oh, happy birthday, Das Boot. July babies. Yay, happy birthday, July babies. I was an August baby. I was an August baby. But July babies are cool. I think I was supposed to be. Yeah, no, I wasn't supposed to be a July baby. I was supposed to be an August baby. I was really late, though. Avocado experiments are great for elementary school science fairs. Yes, that's true. But what scientists do often is like way cooler than what the stock footage suggests. Um I mean, some scientists, their their jobs may not be <laughs> exciting, terribly exciting to some others, but they they would likely enjoy it. I knew a lot of scientists who just sit around and look at look up. I mean, it depends on your job, and if you enjoy it, that's cool. I mean, I enjoy what I do, but I'm in a branch of academia that doesn't require me to do research right now. But I can if I wanted to. Um, it's just up to me. 28. You're level 28 now. Congratulations. Happy level up day. All righty. Says DOS boot. Level up. I don't want to think about what level I am next month. But there you go. All right. With that said, are you guys ready to get into our new, my, you know, what the topic of the thing was? Let me pull up my video. I made this today. I made this. I might do this as a regular segment anyway, but I'm going to devote the entire episode to weird science. Um, avocados grow on trees, right? I believe so, yeah. They're supposed to be fruits. So, yeah, they're not like high sugar fruits, you know? Not like your oranges. You know, we could... Genet I wonder if we could splice orange and avocado trees. And see if we can get them to produce both. Can you make orange and avocado trees? Let me see. You can buy an avocado tree for about $200. Let me see. Grows three to four feet, indoor or outdoor. I mean, I literally just Googled avocado tree. Hmm. How to grow an avocado tree. Maybe we should do some stock footage science at our houses and cut it open. And then... <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great contest, wouldn't it? <laughs> ah, that would be a great contest. Video yourself doing a terrible stock footage thing that you've seen on the show. <laughs> 
Hey, low energy videos. I was on their channel last night and then my internet cut out on me. This is the second time this week that happened, by the way, low energy video. And I got on the phone with my ISP. And it's like talking to the wall. Let me just let me just say this really quickly. It's like talking to the wall. I told them I've got a brand new modem because they up upgraded all the lines in my country area, in my country area where I live. They've gone full fiber optics. We're supposed to have higher upload and download speeds, et cetera, et cetera. Here, you need this new modem. And I've had the same modem forever and it's worked fine, okay? But they wanted me to have this new upgraded modem that also has Wi-Fi and a router. I have an excellent router. It's a high-end gaming Wi-Fi router. It's good, okay? And my computer and my internet, actually my internet has been working fine with the old freaking modem that, you know, it's too old to use with our lines. Okay. So they just showed up randomly at my house unannounced earlier this week to give me a new modem. And after I got that modem, my internet has completely cut out twice. And you know what these people said to me? Well, it's got to be your router. I'm like, it's not my router. It's not my router. Because my computer is plugged directly into your modem, not my router. Your modem sucks. And I've had to explain this to them twice. I have used the same Ethernet cable. Yeah, it's been a while, but it freaking works. And then they go, well, how old is your Ethernet cable? I'm like, it worked with your busted old modem that you thought was bad, but it wasn't bad. And you're like, well, we'll work with our new lines. And then you brought out this new modem. It's not my Ethernet cable. And then they go, well, we managed to reboot your router and that should solve the problem. I'm like, my desktop was plugged into your modem. And it was still out. Do you not understand the words coming out my mouth. Oh my God. I set up my own, I, you know, they came to my house and they're like, we're gonna set this up for you. I'm like, I'm not letting you in my house. My dog will eat you. Well, he may not eat the person, but he's gonna scream his head off the whole time. And I'm not about to let a person in here unless, you know, it's somebody I, I like so I can listen to my my dog scream his head off the entire time. So I ended up installing my own modem because it's easy. <sighs> oh, yeah, it's working. Yeah. You know, man. So my Internet's gone out twice. And the first time it was in the middle of a lecture in the middle of my lecture, like my literal job. So now I have to make a last hour of lecture videos for my students for summer for their summer course covering the rest of chemical equilibrium, which is fine. Good news, though. I have all my old lecture videos up there so they can watch those. It covers the same the same stuff. But it's frustrating. And then last night I'm on low energy videos channel and then my Internet just cuts out. And then I call the people and then they give me the same crap. I'm just going to show up there. I won't go full Karen. I'm not, I'm not that kind of person, but I'm going to stand there and make people feel stupid because they're not listening to the words coming out of my mouth. Man, it's just, ah, I'm okay. Harmonica, man. I always like hugs. All right. Yay, tech support. Hello, Sirf. Is it Sirf? I think that's correct. Yeah, at least I got CJLP. Florida is lousy with avocado trees. Oh, that might be the case, Michael Robel. Goodness gracious. If aging is leveling up, I'm gonna I'm going to go ahead and give this XP back, <laughs> says Das Boot. <laughs> Surf. Thank you. Surf. As in the sport. Okay. Got it. Man, 
freaking tech support makes me crazy. It's like the time when I went to go get my computer fixed and it was the whole issue with the hard drive. Well, you need to buy a new hard drive. I don't need to buy a new hard drive. You have another one there. I also have an external hard drive for you to do data transfer. Just put all of the data onto that one, transfer it to the other hard drive that's functional after you upload the operating system. Well, you don't want a new hard drive? No, I don't. You don't need a new hard drive to put an OS on there. You can just use the one that's like well over a terabyte. Put that on there. I've, I've literally got three external hard drives to store extra crap if I really want to. I keep losing them, which I don't really lose them. I just have, I, I think I lose them and then I buy another. That's how I did with my freaking TI-84s too. <laughs> I ended up buying a total of three. Ah, one for the lab, one for a bag, and one for at home. I could recall record my calls with tech support and then make funny YouTube videos from them. I am in a single party state. I could do that. I could. I, I could call people. I could technically call them through my computer. I do have a Google Voice number. It's what my students use to text me. It's a separate app. I'm like, I'm just going to do this and then I see what I can. I'll go and check the messages when I can. A hard drive's not a new tech toy. <clears throat> I threaten people with marriage. That seems to get it done. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. Threaten people with avocados. I swear they won't know what to do. I'm going to come down there with all these avocados and you're not going to like it when I'm angry. You think the Hulk's green. Wait till you see me with these avocados. And they'll be like, I'm going to guacamole your rear end. I'll make it just, I don't know. That would be weird. You know, anytime I would, it reminds me of my mom. Reminds me of my mom anytime I would talk about my research around her and she just wasn't following. She would look at me and say, I really like Raisin Bran. And then that would be the cue. She's not understanding what I'm saying. Ah, avocado Hulk. I got a Hulk right here, too. I got an army. I got a Hulk. Puny God. I'm loving the new Loki series. It's great puny god hulk smash um i don't know maybe i'll grow indoor in avocado trees that might be cool they're not they're not that i mean they they're about to get really expensive guys produce is about to go through the roof Making your own um, gardens not a bad idea. I'm on them as two acres, so I technically could farm part of my part of my yard, but that's like work and stuff. <laughs> I could farm part of my yard, but we have a lot of wildlife out here too, so I'd have to put like chicken wire around it and stuff to keep the bunnies out and the um, other animals. So there you go. All right. <laughs> now that I had a full on rant about tech support, let's talk about some weird science. What do you guys think? I was gonna pull up this thing on avocado trees. How to grow an avocado tree. Since it's relevant, this seems like a pretty good That's a really long freaking <laughs> link. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hulk smash. Um, I can't wait for the next season of Loki. I'm hoping, you know, because the Eternals, I think, are supposed to get involved. I'm hoping they're able to bring back Black Widow and Tony Stark. I'm still upset. 
that nobody even bothered to have like an actual funeral for Black Widow. It was just, it was just like, eh, mission must carry on. And then Tony dies and everybody all shows up and there's like a service. I'm like, what about, what about Natasha? You know, Ugh. Loki Gator does need his own series. You know, Freya would love little Loki Gator. Who wouldn't? Loki Gator's cute. All righty. Well, let's get on with the thing. Let me get my video up here for you guys. This might be a regular segment. You guys can let me know what you think. What? That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted it to play a video. Okay. Let me do it this way. Local video. Share it from my computer. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Here we go. Ugh. That's not working. I want me to be small. Not that. Ugh. This messed up. I'm going to do that again because this messed up. I am not happy about this. Going to try it again because I messed up the freaking thing. All right. <laughs> so that's my weird science intro. Weird science. Ooh. Bits of technology, bits and people. Yeah. It's my creation. Is it real? Yeah, for real. The rich billionaire thing. Tony Stark is a rich billionaire. Titan's all about his garden, man. I'm glad you're guarding so well. What's the little nursery rhyme? How does your garden grow with silver, be silver bells and cockle shells and pretty little maids in a row? That's Titan. Titan, oh Titan. Titan, dear Titan. How does your garden grow? It grows with, let me find where he's, where is it at? With rosemary, basil, tomatoes, and garlic, and canna lilies all in a row. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Titan has a garden, guys. I'm glad your ger geranium hasn't died. Usually, plants die with me. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Thank you. How does your garden grow? That's right. Thanks for that. I messed up. All righty. Let me see if I can find. Ah. Uh, there was one I was looking at that was crazy. I'm like, this is nuts. All right. Here we go. So this is from July this month. Um, okay, 
let me put this here. This is from Science Daily. It's a reputable site. This came out July 17th. So today, the latest in weird science. Business use of avatars. Business use of avatars. Okay, I'm curious about that. Sports, men and women react differently to a missing audience. <laughs> Brain circuit for spirituality. And best strategy to reduce human bear conflict. I want to know about the human bear conflict. Let's see. Let me catch up on the chat. Uh, got a question. Just watched your vaccine vid. Does CA's new masking make sense based on the data about wearing a mask in um, in public? I mean, I'm vaccinated. I haven't really been wearing a mask since I've been vaccinated because most of the people where I live don't anyway, and I've just kind of thrown in the towel. Um, and I know that's probably really bad. So, yeah, it does make sense, particularly if you're dealing with a lot of people who are not vaccinated um, because the virus can mutate. I, we're going to need booster shots, which is fine. We always get new flu shots because the virus changes. And the good news is the way that it enters into the cells, it's probably not going to change that because it's highly effective for the virus. It's just we're dealing with one that um, can transmit easily, much more easily than the others. And the people that we are seeing going to the hospital are the ones who are not vaccinated. It's still a good idea to wear a mask. Um, just in case, even if you're vaccinated, you might could still carry it. Um, vaccines aren't 100% foolproof uh, in preventing infection, but you're not going to die from the disease. It's 100% effective in lowering and completely eliminating, in most cases, any kind of symptoms that you would have if you were carrying the virus. So it's not going to kill you, and you might not even get sick at all. Um, probably not. But other people, other people who don't have the vaccine, they're dying still. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Can mutations ever be worse than the original? Yes. Yes, they can. Um, like the current mutation, it hasn't changed its mode of entry into the cells because that's a beneficial mutation for the virus. But it has mutated to where it can spread faster which is bad for people who are not vaccinated. They can get this stuff and they can die. And if it can spread faster, it can probably infect you faster as well in your cells, making more copies of itself and increase its number pretty rapidly. Yes. Uh, do you watch trauma films? I see the ad has popped up on your browser. I don't know what trauma films are. I watch a lot of movies, but I don't know anything about trauma. I don't know what that is. Oh, I'm allergic to grass, so I don't even know. It makes me sick. Yeah, I have to have somebody else cut my grass because I get terrible, terrible headaches. Really bad allergies. All right. Let's look at the way to bear strategy to reduce human bear conflict. University of British Columbia, Okanagan campus. I think. That's how you say that. Conservationists have long warned of the dangers associated with bears becoming um, habitated to life in urban areas. Uh, yet it appears the message hasn't gotten through to everyone. News reports continue to cover seemingly similar in situations. A foraging bear enters a neighborhood, easily finds high value food and refuses to leave. <laughs> They've got Yogi. <laughs> The story of 10, oh, sorry, the story often ends with con conservation officers being forced to euthanize the animal for public safety purposes. Oh, no, that's terrible. That is terrible. 
So computer modeling shows reducing attractants most effective in keeping bears away. Don't leave your picnic baskets out. See you later, big zebra. Don't leave your picnic baskets out, guys. That's what's happening. Bears are getting used to the high quality food that's in your garbage, probably in your garbage, things like that. Um, it happens all the time. And humans are almost always at fault. Well, yes, you're leaving food out for bears to come to your backyard and eat the things. Um, the idea is to keep bears from coming into urban areas. So what did they come up with? Using agent-based computer modeling, researchers were able to simulate the movement of black bears in and around Whistler, identifying the potential attractants, luring them in. So they used GPS tracking of real bears. They used landscape spatial characteristics, movement patterns. And then they created a virtual landscape. All right. We were able to track the model bears as they moved through the landscape and interacted with different cells in the software. That represented anthropogenic food, vegetation, and human deterrence. The ability to put all of these proxies allowed us to better understand where they're roaming, why, and test different strategies within the simulation to find the most effective way to keep them out. All righty. What was really interesting was how the model allowed us to identify attractants that maybe otherwise wouldn't be considered, like human garbage or large amounts of berries on private land within city limits. I would think that would still be an attractant if you have lots of garbage out. Hey, nether. But that's like, they're interested in, I mean, they eat berries. You have a lot of berries in your yard. That's bear food, yeah? I mean, we're told if you go camping, you put your food in a bag and you hang it from a tree away from the bears. Because they attract bears. Ah, bear bangers. What are bear bangers? This is the thing. Using deterrents like bear bangers may be effective temporarily in that the bear will get frightened and run away, but they won't be gone for long. What are bear bangers? They'll remember being scared off, but their memories of the good meal will supersede the, fe the fear. So if they have a good meal, Bear bangers don't work. Seriously, what are bear bangers? Um, I got to look that up. Okay. So I've looked up bear bangers. Fortunately, I haven't found anything um, disturbing. never heard of a bear banger before electric fence shock <clears throat> bear deterrent animal repeller what in the world okay i guess it just makes loud noise it's like a gun kind of like a flare gun here we go. Bear bangers and flares. Okay, so they just make really loud sounds. I mean, it's a bear. You make a loud sound, yeah, it's going to run away. But if this is your house and you have a recurring visiting yogi bear because you leave your trash out or you don't secure it or you have too many berries in your yard, I mean, really, it's your fault. Man. Oh, why you bring that up? Harmonica man about baby diapers. Thank you. No, I'm going to puke. Bears have always went to the dumps to get free food. Yes. Yes, they have. 
We have issues with raccoons around here. Shadow was attacked twice. Oh no, raccoons can be pretty fierce, man. They can be pretty fierce. Okay. It's important to learn how to coexist with wildlife. No kidding. No kidding. Actually, I'm, I've really gotten irritated with one of my neighbors. My neighbors is a veteran firefighter, but it's just like, he's a volunteer one. He didn't like that my grass was a certain height. And he went to my mom across the street and complained to my stepdad about me. And then he was complaining that he had a snake in his yard and he blamed me for that. The main snakes we have in our yard are like green snakes, which are not venomous. And then we also have water moccasins because there's several lakes out here. It's not my fault if a snake is in your yard. I don't see him coming over to my, my mom's house and complaining about all the deer or bunnies who are in his yard. We had a snake in there. It's clearly her fault. It's my fault for the deers and bunnies, not the snakes. <laughs> You're welcome. Get mad at me about deers and bunnies, not freaking snakes. Oh my goodness. People are jerks. We know that bears who tend to come into communities are often juvenile or female bears with cubs because the large males already have all the good spots and have established their territories. <laughs> That's cause for concern because it means the females are teaching their cubs techniques to access at anthropogenic, uh, anthropogenic food. It also means these are the bears who are most often put down. Oh, so we're selectively eliminating a particular part of their population. That's pretty awful. Ah, all righty. So that was interesting. The bear-human conflict. I think we have the right to arm bears. That's the 2A amendment. The right to arm bears. We should totally do that. Raccoons are jerks. The last one I saw in my alley got a bucket of water dumped on its head. <laughs> oh my goodness. Business use of avatars or brain circuit for spirituality. Hmm. I don't know. Research less likely to be true is cited more. Oh. Uh-oh. That's bad, guys. That's bad. That is bad. Papers that cannot be replicated are cited 153 times more because their findings are interesting. This is where I point out even scientists are subjected to bias. And, you know, papers are getting retracted more. Like that, um, um, Raul Didier, he said hydroxychloroquine cures the Rona. Absolutely no evidence whatsoever. And all of his papers have been retracted, which is why he's going after Elizabeth Bick. Uh, she runs pubpeer.org. She's one of the founders of that organization. That's a watchdog for bad science. And it's pretty awesome. You can check out all this stuff there. But he's in France. And France is trying to sue her and they can't. The, the scientists in France who um, had their papers retracted because she went through their data and wrote the journals. <laughs> Wish anybody can do. They um, they retracted, they retracted practically all of Raoul Didier's um, papers because they are terrible. So here we go. Let's see papers in leading psychology, economic, and science journals that fail to replicate and therefore are less likely to be true are often the most cited papers in academic research, according to a new study. Replication crisis in which researchers have discovered that many findings in, their, in the fields of social sciences and medicine don't hold up when other researchers try to repeat the experiments. There's a lot, well, to be fair, with social science and certain types of medicine, 
you really social science a lot of that stuff is hard to replicate because people have so many variables about them and there's different <laughs> there's different things that are going on and they might behave a certain way one day and behave completely different another day i mean i'm just going to defer to Bjork with her song, Human Behavior. If you ever get close to a human in human behavior, be ready to get confused. Because <laughs> there is no compass, because oh, no, there is no map and a compass doesn't help at all. <laughs> it's uncertainty. <laughs> That's human behavior. Any social sciences in, regarding humans, it's always going to be difficult because humans have so many variables affecting them. I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, let's see. Ah, okay. Brain circuit for spirituality. I'm curious. Well, then. July 1st, 2021. This is going to be pretty interesting. Using data sets from neurological patients and those with brain lesions, researchers mapped lesion locations associated with spiritual and religious belief to a specific human brain circuit. So somebody might read that and say people who are religious have brain lesions. <laughs> so somebody might say, might read that and say that. Nather says there is also a huge problem with political motivated research. There are big interest groups that will pay a lot to have lots of junk research papers published in order to obfuscate matters. Yes, their motives certainly. Ah, Brigham U. Isn't that the Mormon University at Brigham? A new study led by investigators at Brigham and Women's Hospital takes a new approach to mapping spirituality and re religiosity and finds that spiritual acceptance can be localized to a specific brain circuit. The brain circuit is in the periaqueductal gray brain stem region that has been implicated in numerous functions, including fear conditioning, pain modulation, altruistic behaviors, and unconditional love. I find that pretty interesting. So they're saying that the spirituality in religiosity is in an area that has fear conditioning, pain modulation altruistic behaviors and unconditional love. Fear conditioning though. I mean, I was brought up in the Nazarene faith. I often, I don't really talk about religion so much, but I was brought up in the Nazarene faith, considered joining the church. I mean, I've, I've been to lots of different types of churches and I won't talk about what my personal personal perspective is with that. But one thing that they did a lot of in that particular one was fear conditioning. If I didn't pray every night before I went to sleep, if I died in my sleep, I would go to hell. That's what I was taught. Fear conditioning. We were taught we had to pray often because you might have sinned and didn't know it. And if you sinned and you didn't know it, it didn't matter if you were a regular attendee of church and did all the things and did your best that you could with it to not sin or make mistakes, you have to take into consideration the sins that you don't realize that you did. Because you could be hurting people. And if you're hurting people, that's a sin. And you might have hurt somebody's feelings and you didn't know it. So that is enough to, to make you die and go to hell if you died in your sleep. This is what I was taught. That's a lot of fear conditioning. Um, altruistic behaviors. There was supposed to be unconditional love, but we were taught to hate specific people. 
Um, so it's, it's strange. And I find it interesting that Brigham is part of this study because they're a Mormon, I believe. Aren't they a Mormon university? So that's, that's weird. Our, re our results suggest that spirituality and religiosity are rooted in fundamental neurobiological dynamics and deeply woven into our neurofabric. I won't say that that's spirituality and religiosity. You have to be told that's what that is. We would have those things um, anyway, <laughs> regardless of those particular beliefs. So what this paper is doing, which I find to be a, a bit dishonest, um, is trying to say that spirituality and religiosity is fundamental. It's a part of who we are. Um, no, it's really not. Uh, some people could say that sexuality is a part of everyone. Not everybody's sexual. You have asexual individuals. Um, so it's just like, and at the same time, when you're looking at this, all of that altruistic behavior and unconditional love, we see in the animal kingdom, we see altruistic behavior. We see animals completely give over their lives to protect other species. And we see other species care for the babies of a different species. We can see that unconditional love in there. Um, I mean, there's a reason why ecosystems will completely be okay when humans are gone. Um, because they work together. <laughs> All of the species are connected. And you have, you know, a balance. You have species looking out for each other, even thinning the herd if they need to. So that's the problem that I have by saying that this is exclusively, this is exclusively meant for spirituality and religiosity. Um, all of that, I believe, is a form of philosophy, trying to understand the world, existence, why are we here kind of thing. That's not a biological thing. That's a philosophical thing. Now, asking questions and looking for patterns, that's the biological thing. Our brain is wired to ask questions and look for patterns. I don't think our brain is wired necessarily to prescribe to a particular type of philosophy. So I think this is a bit dishonest. I think this is a bit dishonest with that. Nasser says, flawed thinking is a fundamental part of humans and that leads off into religion. It can. I mean, I, I, I don't dis, you know, disrespect anybody who has a particular faith. And I think it's important to note that people find comfort in those things. I, I accept that. And I'm happy people find comfort in those things. We do the best we can um, with the hand that we're dealt. And often that means um, calling to a higher power. And that's okay. That's okay. But I don't think it's okay to say that every single person will prescribe to that particular type of philosophy and that way of thinking because it's biologically wired into their brain. I don't agree with that. I would have never known about religion um, had I not been brought up that way. And there was fear conditioning. There was um, there was punishment. Um, there was they encouraged you to talk about your problems, which was great, but you had to do it in front of everybody. And if you talked about them in private, the only answer you got was you need to read the Bible more. And I had a period of time I went through. Um, I still kind of do. Uh, sleep paralysis. My sister has it. I have it. And my mom has it. So I thought we were, where our house was like cursed with demons for a while because we all had these horrible night terrors. We didn't know what sleep paralysis was. 
Nobody told us that. They just told us to read the Bible more and sleep with it under our pillow, and that would protect us. That didn't work. <laughs> I, ha I still have sleep paralysis, but once I figured out what it was, oh, this is a thing. Demons aren't really wrestling me in hell like I thought I was. That was my brain being fantastic. Monks weren't standing around my bed chanting in the middle of the night. So, I mean, our brains are wired. And I have a fantastic imagination. I'm not even going to lie to you. Some of the dreams I have, I really need to write screenplays because they are way out there. But it's like what I dream about in my um, sleep paralysis that I have, a lot of that's implanted by other people. That's not biologically wired into my brain. It's just... For me to think I see demons that I'm in elementals, I'm wrestling in hell and monks all around me chanting over me. It made me feel special. It made me feel special because I thought I had these special powers and I was supposed to share this with, with other people. No, I just had sleep paralysis. Not nearly as sexy cool, you know. If I lived 100,000 years ago and saw lightning for the first time, I think it would be the sky gods getting mad. Yes, lightning's fantastic. It's amazing. And you know what? You can still believe that sky gods do that. But I don't think you're wired to automatically believe that. I think what that is, is asking the question, how does this happen? And so you base it on things that you see around you in order to rationalize those particular um, answers. It would make sense. Yeah, it would make absolute sense. But that's people being observant and applying what they know to try to answer that question. That's not something that's automatically wired. The automatically wired thing is us asking questions. And then we get in trouble when we do. I mean, we beat it out of our kids all through school. They're not allowed to ask questions because what if it's a dumb question? They get punished. If they get something wrong, they get punished. If they get an F, they fail, they get punished. Rather than addressing what the thing is, what's going on where they're not getting this concept. Um, that's not the focus. <laughs> so it's nuts. It's crazy. So I'm going to call BS on this, man. Brigham, come on, man. And biological psychiatry, what are you doing? What are you doing? Mm. Materials. Where are the materials? I want to see. Yeah, so here it is. Here, I'll put this in here and you guys can can look for yourselves and come up with your own conclusions on what you think. Brain circuit for spirituality. We're not hardwired for that. That's just, pro that's just where people are isolated, where the fear conditioning is and altruism and that sort of thing, which is in every living thing on the planet. And it doesn't mean that religion is hardwired into us. And spirituality. Mm. We were astonished to find that this brain circuit for spirituality is centered in the most, in one of the most evolutionary preserved structures in the brain. Why is that astonishing? I don't understand why that's astonishing. People ask questions, and if you tell them they're going to die and go to hell if they don't pray every night to forgive, you know. That's fear conditioning. It's no different than telling a kid not to touch a stove. And if they touch a stove, it's going to hurt. And so they're going to be afraid to touch a stove. So they're going to do the behaviors to keep from touching the stove. Um, that's, you know, that's what that is. So I'm going to call BS on that, Brigham. Come on, man. For real. Mm-hmm. Makes me mad. That went a whole direction I wasn't expecting. What a pain. I hate it when 
stuff like that happens. It's misrepresentation. Yeah, but what kid hasn't touched the stove anyway? Exactly. What kid hasn't? And then they learn. And then they're conditioned to not do that again, right? Mm. So let's see. Hmm. Somebody made mac and cheese ice cream. Why in the world? Okay, so this is just random strange news. Okay. This is just random strange news. Mac and cheese. The ice cream you never thought you'd need. And now it's hard to get. What? Support for NPR and the following NPR. message come from the House of Roll. Hit the play button below to hear director Kavita Katri speak to the artisanship behind roll faucets and fixtures, luxury designs inspired by art and architecture. Okay. Comfort food is supposed to provide comfort, not so for comedian Josh Prey. We are living in the last days. I know the Bible said a lot of things were going to happen, but the Bible forgot to mention they were going to turn macaroni and cheese into ice cream. Yes, mac and cheese flavored ice cream. <laughs> Prey took to YouTube to give the world his take on the controversial concoction. Is this a terrible idea? Absolutely. Should this have been made? Gosh, no. This come from the mind of a first grader. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> no, that's so gross. Macaroni and cheese ice cream. Why? Oh, my goodness. Let me see if I can find some other. Here's some more strange news. <laughs> Not the last days again. Well, it is if we're making mac and cheese ice cream. Next thing you know, people be putting hot sauce on their mac and cheese ice cream and adding chicken. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Most Americans think intelligent aliens exist and half think they have visited Earth. All right, some weird science here. Here's this article. All right. Um, for the last few weeks, the imminent release of a U.S. intelligence report on UFOs had stirred excitement across the United States. So it's not surprising to find that most Americans believe in intelligent life inhabiting other worlds, according to a survey conducted before the report was made public on June 25th. So this is Pew Research. They're pretty reputable for the most part. And I use some stuff from them. All right. Well, here's where the data is. So I'll share that. I would think they left in a hurry. Oh, gosh. Everything's nuts. All right. Let's see what this says. Let's look at the data. Most Americans say intelligent life exists outside Earth and don't see UFOs as a major security threat. Intelligent life on other planets, they think, yes. are probably, okay, so UFOs reported by people in the military are probably evidence of intelligent life outside Earth. <laughs> Their UFOs are not a threat to U.S. national security. <laughs> hey, Sandy, I don't think I said hi to you yet. Oh, my goodness. 
What's the next page say? I'm just curious. Oh, we are on the next page. What did the previous page say? I'm so confused. Okay, I'm just going to go back to here. So P released this survey prior to World UFO Day, an informal holiday celebrated on July 2nd by UFO enthusiasts. It's to mark the um, crash at Roswell in 1947. A nerdy rodent. What's going on? Oh, is this evidence of a UFO? Oh, this is UFO evidence. All right. So, so this was original UFO evidence, but um, the Navy's UFO video is released. It's really a weather balloon. Uh-oh. It's coming to get us. Well, I mean, the Navy ended up saying it was a weather balloon. NASA That's not an LNS, though, is it? It's not. It is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's a like weather thing, it's rotating. But balloons do that. Weather balloons, they get warped, and then they turn side to side. And they flow as fast as the they go. They fly as fast as the wind. So, and it was later determined that, yes, this is a weather balloon. A UFO doesn't mean it's alien life form. It means it's unidentified flying object. That's what they call it. They don't know what it is right off. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we got to figure out what it is. It's a weather balloon. NASA uses them all the time. I actually visited in NASA Social. Um, under the NASA Social Program, I went and saw their one of their weather balloon laboratories. And... They exist. You can check it out, too. It's on my YouTube channel under the NASA Social um, playlist. You can go and see everything that I saw when I was at NASA, including the weather balloon stuff. So, yeah, that's not UFOs, Americans. That is not the UFOs. <sighs> so they questioned 10,417 Americans about aliens and UFOs and 76% between 18 and 19 in 29 years of age were likely to believe in intelligent aliens. And then 69% of people ages 30 to 49 and 58% of people 50 to 60. So a majority of Americans, no matter what age or age you're in, think intelligent aliens exist. The likelihood that intelligent aliens exist, I'm not certain. I think it'd be more likely to be microbial or some more simplistic type of aliens. Yes, exactly, Nether. It's just they hadn't identified it yet, so they call it unidentified, right? <laughs> uh -huh. Man. So that's interesting. Strange news. Americans think aliens are real. Thank you, M. Night Shalomon. Man. Let's see. A new type of optical illusion tricks the brain into seeing dazzling rays. Well, let's have a look at this. Uh, warning, if you are epileptic or have anything associated with brain illusion stuff, um, might want to turn it off because I don't want you to have any kind of fits or, or like seizures. 
I have a booming chat. Yes. All right. So look. Ah, okay. So here's the optical illusion. You can see rays in the middle. Scintillating starburst. That's kind of cool. They're not really there, but our brain thinks it is. It looks like it's the sun, guys. A simple pattern of um, concentric wreaths on a plain white background. You can see bright rays or beams emanating from the center of the design. So I'll put this in the chat and you guys can have a look. Um, and they have a link on how they work. Our brains are trying to find patterns and stuff. And so we can kind of manipulate that to get it to do what we want it to do. It's pretty neat. Hmm. Boom and chat. The French fry stealing seagull is the star of a new Google ad. <laughs> French fry stealing seagull. They do like stealing those French fries, don't they? Hmm. Is this the Google ad here? I don't want. Let's see. Three, two, one. What? That's not what I wanted. Commerce, but now that everybody's working from home. Oh crap. Okay, it's another freaking ad. It's a ghost town. Little I don't want that. Oh my god. Well, they know one of their colleagues just blasted out five of the entire Oh god, they make it impossible to enjoy nice things, don't they? <sighs> You want to listen to the sound? Well, that means you got to click on an ad. Scientists convert plastic waste into vanilla flavoring. Bye, Harmonica Man. Take it easy. Okay. I actually enjoyed the Black Widow film. I thought it was pretty good. In the future, your vanilla ice cream may be made from plastic bottles. Vanillin. Yep. That's the compound that carries the smell and taste of vanilla. And you can make it synthetically. About 85% of vanillin is currently made from chemicals taken from fossil fuels. Wow. And so since we can, since plastic is technically made from fossil fuels, we can get vanillin from it. And since we can actually synthesize that, that's a lot better than trying to grow vanilla beans everywhere. Okay, so previous studies showed how to break down plastic bottles from the polyethylene terephthalate into its basic subunit known as terephthalic acid. In the new study, two researchers at University of Edinburgh, shout out to Scots, um, genetically, they genetically engineered E. coli to convert terephthalic acid into vanillin. You can have bacteria converted vanilla for your shakes and your cakes and your ice creams. Maybe even for your coffee. The terephthalic acid and vanillin have very similar chemical compositions in the engineered bacteria only needs to make minor changes 
to the number of hydrogens and oxygens that are bonded to the same carbon backbone. Huh. Where is the, I want to look at the chemical structures. Let's see how similar they are. Parabolic acid. All right, so let's have a look. I want to see. Here is vanillin. 3D structure. All right. Let me see about terapsolic acid. Um, where's PubChem on this? Surely they have a three. Here it is. I was about to say. All right. All right. So this is terapsolic acid, which can be extracted. Now this is vanillin. So this is terapsolic acid and it can be extracted from plastic bottles. And we got vanillin very close. Let's see, we've got terapsolic acids, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons, two double bonded oxygens, two alcohol groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. Yep, they both have eight carbons. This one has eight hydrogens, though, and three oxygens. This one has six hydrogens and four oxygens. All right, so it looks like. Uh, All right. So we lose, we lose an oxygen and gain a couple of hydrogens between the two. Which oxygen do we lose? We lose one of the double bonded oxygens. Okay, we lose a double bonded oxygen. Hydrogen pops in over there and we get, yeah, so one of these goes away. And then we end up with a carbon just rearranged. So this goes away, this carbon pops over here and we get an oxygen. That's what happens. Huh. Yep. That goes away. Then this carbon moves over here to this oxygen and this one gains a hydrogen. So they'd have to break that bond. Does that have, oh, wait, wait. Nope, hold on. Got a double to hump. So that one moves. And it gets double bonded over there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six in that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six in that. Okay. Organic synthesis, guys. So it can convert terapsolic acid to vanillin. I really need to see these side by side if I'm gonna actually look at this. Hold on, there we go. All right, that's better. Now I can see the difference, which one. So there's only one external carbon here. Okay. Oh, this is terapsolic acid. And this is vanilla. And ch -ch -ch, moving it around. I am not a fan of organic synthesis. I was never really good at it. But trying to figure out which carbons to move, which ones are the easiest to break as far as bonds, you can go through and do that entire thing. So this is the compound we want. This is the compound we start out with. So you have one external here. And then you have this car. Okay. All right. I get it. They lose one of the double bonded oxygens.
And they rearrange. Yeah, they just rearrange the oxygens and such. Cool. Avoid the internet for a week. Can you avoid the internet for a week? Is it possible, Sandy? My Kroger order has, we are missing some of these items. Will you have these um, exceptions? Yep. Update my order. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> I still have them. Um, I still pick up my groceries. I try to avoid going to the grocery store. Anyway. Well, that I think we can probably wrap up all of the weird science. Maybe bring that back each week. That might be fun. Weird science is fun, but maybe not spend so much time doing it. Okay. So, weird science. I think. I'm a bit concerned about the guy with a megaphone. I think he might have problems. I'm not certain. He's screaming a lot. <laughs> oh, new variants. How exciting. Okay, guys. Well, let's read Mr. Rogers, and I'm going to let you guys go. It's been an hour and a half and a really fun episode. I'll be back next week. Not certain. Not certain what I'll be talking about. <laughs> yeah, the pig fella does have a few questions, Sandy. Always a few there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm glad someone gets it, but I'm still not buying fake vanilla if I can help it. Well, you know, it's vanilla. It's the same thing that you get in the vanilla beans. Okay, let me see what I got. Um, we are all neighbors. So this is from the world, according to Mr. Rogers. We are all neighbors. It's no secret that I like to get to know people and not just the outside stuff of their lives. I like to try to understand the meaning of who people are and what they're saying to me. It's really important we listen to each other and try to understand why people are doing the things that they do and why they see the things the way that they see them and not just base it on our own biases. Looking at you, Brigham. Just saying with that whole thing. Um, we need to dig a bit deeper and sometimes that means not putting our own um, perceptions on another person or giving some data. So it's no secret that I like to get to know people and not just the outside stuff of their lives. I like to try to understand the meaning of who people are and what they're saying to me. And that's really important as an educator as well. You need to listen to your students. You need to ask them what they need. So academics out there. Get feedback from your students. See what they need. Honest feedback. And don't be thin-skinned to get your feelings hurt if something you did didn't work. <laughs> your job is to educate other people. And so the needs of your students matter. And setting them up for success 
instead of failure is really, really important. And they'll remember that. And that's how we change the world. A little bit at a time, helping each other out. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it to you guys. It was awesome seeing you. And I'll end with this. You always make each day special for me. You know how? By just your being you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.